Hello everyone and welcome back to Very Cold Lasagna, your filthy casual place for all the filthy casual takes on the world of sports. I am Dylan Lasagna and we are here once again to talk about my San Francisco 49ers who finished their week 14 with, well, a win. Yeah, it was a win and a dominant one over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or as I like to call them here, the Tampa Bay Bucks in shorthand. And, you know, going into this matchup against the Tampa Bay Bucks, as I talked about in my preview for this game, you know, even though the, the Tampa Bay Bucks, you know, they were 6-6, uh, six and six, you know, you never knew what you were going to expect out of a middling and disappointing Tampa Bay team overall, uh, despite them having, well, arguably or debatably one of the best quarterbacks of all time, however you want to debate that, in Tom Brady, with a, a as talented as they are uh, supporting cast in receivers like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and running back Leonard Fournette. And, but the thing was, you know, they were they were beaten up. They were injured on both sides of the ball. And meanwhile, for the 49ers, you know, despite the situation with the Bucs, you, you also had your situation. You just lost Jimmy Garoppolo for practically the season. Um, you had injuries on your end as well and you're coming in with a third string quarterback that you're going to be starting for the very first time and you know how Brady is with first time starters and well pretty much Brock Purdy you know he did pretty uh, good in the in his first game coming in relief for Jimmy uh, against the Miami Dolphins but this is his first first test um, starting against well again Tom Brady uh, no matter what the, t- the situation was no matter what the team was even if it was a crappy Bucks team so you know look at this game um you know as I frantically came home from work as it <laughs> as it was gonna start um you know when, when the game started you know the Niners are on offense um and I guess they really took the homework that was given to them by the Miami Dolphins and they took it to heart they tried to go blitz heavy they tried to scare Mr. Irrelevant early and often with the Blitz. They went all out. They sold out on the Blitz. But the Bucks actually paid the price early for it. They got penalized for roughing the passer on the very first nap. And you'd think they would learn their lesson from it. No, they didn't. They absolutely did not learn from it. They kept blitzing Brock Purdy um, every, almost every play. And yeah, Purdy made a... A, a couple of mistakes on the first few plays and then some, but he eventually settled in. He knew the blitz was coming. They knew they were going to like go after him, but man, you, you see him settled in, in the pocket, got the ball out pretty quick, got some big plays into the playmakers, Debo, McCaffrey, uh, Kittle. Debo, by the way, took a toss play on the opening drive uh, from Purdy for the first touchdown of the game. 7 nothing. Right, right then and there, and then on the defensive end, when it was Tom Brady's turn to, you know, shine, uh, you know, despite an early injury uh, from Kevin Givens with a knee injury, you know, the defense would set the tone with a crap ton of pressure onto Tom Brady, whether it was the blitz or patiently waiting um, in the wings so they can get to Tom Brady. You know, they were getting heavy pressure. They were the they're having their way with. The beaten up offensive line who didn't have uh, Tristan Wirfs and they were already out uh, without Ryan Jensen uh, for this game, uh, Tampa, by the way. And yeah, they were having their way with the Bucks' offensive line. And so when they forced a three and out uh, with the Bucks, you know, it seemed like later on, much later in the first quarter, it seemed like it was actually going to be a little bit of a tighter game. You know, Brock Purdy still... Um, you know, he's still trying to, like, figure out um, his receivers uh, and the the supporting cast. And then the defense, you know, they're trying to do all they can. But it seemed like it was going to be a tighter game in one of those Tom Brady-like games um, of the past. You know, Mike Evans goes uncovered for what was an easy touchdown um, midway in the first quarter because someone in the defense left them uncovered and it was like by the time Mike Evans got to the end zone, uh, which was Talno Hufunga, it was like too late. I was like, who the f- 
Frick was covering him. Like, like why was he? Why was he uncovered all of a sudden? And but they were just lucky. The Niners were just lucky that Donovan West, the Bucks often flag tackle, negated the touchdown because he was holding. He was flagged for holding. So they got lucky there. And then they also got lucky later on when Ryan Suckup missed a long ass field goal. So that kept the Bucks scoreless. And then Brock later led a party drive that bled into the second quarter. And Brock Purdy actually went untouched for a party touchdown at the goal line. Like, dang. Like when you saw that touch that what led to that touchdown run, he did a pretty good job observing the field of trying to find someone open, but when he didn't see anyone open, he looked at he saw the opening in the run in the run and took it. Sure, he got hit a little, but he he took it like a man. He took it like a man's man. So all of a sudden it's 14 to nothing to begin the second quarter. And the Bucks offense is like, man, this is just like how it was Monday night. Pressure in the face of Tom Brady. Can't do shit. They go three and out. And then the Niners offense made them pay. Um, Brock Purdy, all of a sudden, because he outplayed Tom Brady. And he continues to throw to Debo. Um, and then all of a sudden, uh, much later on, midway in the second quarter, in the face of pressure, he throws a touchdown to Christian McCaffrey. And with a pretty good mid-range deep lob throw. And... All of a sudden, 21 to nothing, 49ers, midway through, as they were putting on a clinic on the Tom Brady. Yes, that Tom Brady coming home to the Bay Area as the Niners defense continued to assure that Tom Brady and his offense was not going to lead, uh, not going to have one of uh, Tom Brady's signature comebacks that he, he often leads, especially that one in the Super Bowl. The Niners defense was not going to let that happen. But then the one thing that I'm probably going to be a little critical about, but this is probably the only thing I'm going to be critical about when talking about my 49ers in this particular recap is what happened in, in the second quarter with less than five minutes left to go in the first half. So pretty much what happened was um, as they were trying to go up the field, the Niners uh, called a run play, for whatever reason, with Debo Samuel. They were up 21 to nothing, and they had Debo Samuel take a, take a run up the middle, and then he got trapped. He got, his, his leg got trapped, and he fumbled the ball, and the Bucks recovered it. But that's not the major story here. The major story uh, was Debo in a lot of pain, holding his knee. Uh, his, I think it was his left knee, um, but we are you know, wrong. But either way, he was holding his, his leg. He, They had to bring out the cart for him. He was visibly emotional. And sure, all the players were gathering around him, rallying around him. Trey was there too. But doesn't that seem a little familiar from, you know, much earlier in the season? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway... Uh, more on that later, but, you know, you had Jordan Mason there. Why didn't you run, why didn't you, like, all play um, on the outside, like, with a run on the outside or run in the middle? I mean, I'm not saying that I would want Jordan Mason injured, but wouldn't it be wise not to do that, like, run Debo in the middle? Yeah, maybe that's something that Kyle Shanahan should not be doing anymore. With his receivers. So anyway. The Niners had to shake off the emotional taste. Of what just happened. And you know the Bucks Get the ball. And they began pushing into the red zone. But you know. Because it's the Bucks offense. And they can't. They haven't been able to do shit. In the red zone. And the Niners defense. Managed to stop them. On third and fourth down. And Bray's getting all pissed. It's like. Hey that's supposed to be a foul. That's supposed to be pass interference. Jimmy Ward contacted him too much. And Brady was getting pissed at the referee. And on fourth down, Mike Evans started getting pissed at him um, because Brady mi missed him on a throw. And 
<laughs> it was just all anti-harmony. Or no harmony on the Bucks. The ship was quickly sinking. Because for the 49ers, rather than them just settling for what they have at 21 points, and, you know, I guess you could give a little credit to Kyle Shanahan. You're, you know, Shanahan is going to be like, oh, let's just take the field goal. Let's just go stretch the field, take a field goal, go 24 to nothing. Brock Purdy was like, no, Kyle, I'll do you one better. Let's just throw a touchdown to Brandon Ayuk, um, even though Ayuk had to, like, stop get the the ball that was a little underthrown there and make it 28 to nothing over Brady and the Bucks at halftime like goddamn 28 to nothing over Brady and the Bucks and sure that reminds you of a you know a particular score in that Super Bowl in 2017 but this is a different time period this is a different team that Tom Brady is playing so yeah 28 to nothing at halftime and I'm, you know, I'm thinking to myself, okay, all right, damn. Brock Purdy is putting on a show here. He's like, uh, like going ham on, on like this future Hall of Fame quarterback. So you get to the second half, and the Bucks get the ball first. They're starting to threaten on the opening drive, but then they get to midfield, and the defense. Uh, threatens, they pressure Tom Brady on a third down throw and the high pressure causes Brady to get the ball out a little earlier than usual and Deshaun Gibson, the backup safety gets the interception and he, they get the, the ball midfield on the other end and that allows the Niners on their side, the, on the opening drive to return it um, with Christian McCaffrey as he found a hole, slithering his way uh, for a house call touchdown run, and all of a sudden, it's 35 to nothing uh, for the 49ers. And, yeesh, this is like quickly becoming a dismantling of the ship. So, the, the Bucks, you know, they try to salvage what they can, try to uh, prevent a shutout, and they're trying to do so by going hurry up. Uh, but Brady throws another pick. This time, the Dre Greenlaw. Um, and even though the Niners can't do anything else, um, you know, <laughs> they try to get more points, but it just ain't happening. And the Bucks do eventually prevent the shutout from happening um, on a bubble throw from Chris Godwin and into the hands of Russell Gage. I mean, it's something, but, and you know, they try to do the magic comeback, but Brady and the offense are so bad that it's, it's just... Starts raining and it's all awful from there. So you get to the fourth quarter, and for whatever reason, there's this you know, obviously, uh, for me, there's a sense of urgency to get the starters on, especially the Niners, out because they have a game this Thursday against Seattle. But for whatever reason, even though uh, the Bucks are down big, like a large ass deficit. Todd Bowles has the whatever reason they have he has the gall to <laughs> keep Tom Brady and the Bucks out there for whatever reason Tom Brady and the offense just wouldn't let the defense the 49ers defense and the starters like just, just go leave they just won't, won't go away like what what's their problem <laughs> what is their problem here so after a long 10-ass minutes, like five minutes, that stretch into the fourth quarter, the defense forced an incomplete fourth down from Brady to finally get Josh Johnson, their backup that they signed off the street, and the reserves into the game. Like, God damn it, finally. They get him uh, out of the game. And then less than five minutes uh, left in the game, Todd Bull still can't help himself, and Tom Brady is still in the game. Like, dude... You have Blaine Gabbert. Like, doesn't Brady want to save himself from the embarrassment that he's already been into? Like, geez Louise. Like, geez Louise. Like, as if he hasn't been embarrassed already. Is it? Like, what, what's his deal? Like, he can't... He can't save himself against this defense that's already stifled him for 
nearly 60 minutes. But yet, he doesn't want to, Todd Bowles doesn't want to put in Blaine Gabbert. Why not? Why not? Himself from the embarrassment. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Uh, so anyway, you know the old saying, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. As Rashad White, you know, tried to get a fourth down conversion, but he fumbled the ball as the Niners recovered it. And yeah, that was pretty much it for Brady and the Bucks. as Josh Johnson converted a fourth down conversion to Danny Gray, who finally got some action and finally got his first NFL catch. And that was pretty much the ball game. 35 to 7, Niners get a ass kicking win over the Tampa Bay Bucks. And yeah, that was that was a game. That happened. And holy heck, that was a beatdown that yeah. I even I didn't expect. So I gotta say, Brock Purdy, you know, he looked pretty good. He looked pretty damn good in this game. He looked poised in the pocket. When pressure was coming into his face, he didn't look scared at all. He absolutely did not look scared at all. He looked fearless. He got the ball out quick. Um, and he absolutely trusted his uh, receivers and vice versa. They trusted him. So that is absolutely good progress. And, you know, it, hopefully Kyle Shannon continues to trust him even more. And it, I guess it's a good thing. That the Debo Samuel injury is not as serious as initially feared. Apparently, the initial report is a high ankle sprain. But let's just hope that this is a wake-up call for Kyle Shannon to stop using Debo Samuel like a running back. Please. It, especially considering that, you know, one of the your 49ers Hall of Famers in Jerry Rice calls your bitch ass out for using Debo like a running back. Yeah. I think it's time to stop using him like a running back. Use him like what you sign an extension for as a pure receiver. Like, I mean, come on. Isn't that why Debo actually held out back in April last year? Hmm? I think it's time to stop using Debo Samuel like a running back, especially up the middle. Isn't that why Trey Lance got hurt back in week two? I'm just saying. And then... As we transition over to the early preview for week 15, which is this Thursday, the Niners actually have a shot to clinch the NFC West. Yeah, this early as this Thursday. And I guess we could say thank you to the Carolina Panthers for for beating the Seattle Seahawks because, damn, if the Niners hadn't taken care, care of their business, this actually could be... Uh, some uh, a more uh, interesting game. Not to say that this will be an interesting game because it most certainly will, but the stakes in this game are going to be um, crazy. But it obviously would have been even crazier um, if Seattle had won. But hell, the stakes in this game are big, are, are still big for both these teams. But, you know, thank you to Carolina for making our job on Thursday uh, manageable, but you know, then I still have to take care of their business this Thursday in Seattle. So will they, we'll see. So obviously the Niners do play this Thursday, um, in Seattle coming off a big win against the Tampa Bay Bucks, but you know, um, some injuries did happen. Um, hopefully every, uh, everyone that did come out aside from, uh, Debo will be able to suit up and yeah, hopefully they'll just be able to be, be ready to play and the Niners will come out on top. So we'll be talking more about this Thursday night game uh, uh, in Seattle, uh, where the Niners do have their first chance to clinch the division um, against the Seahawks. So we'll be talking more about that in the days to come. So that is a wrap on my recap of the 49ers in a dominant win over the Tampa Bay Bucks. So let me know your thoughts about this crazy game. This is Dominant win over Tom Brady and the Bucks in the comments below. Anyway, this is Dylan Lasagna a Very Cold Lasagna signing out. And keep that lasagna very cold in the fridge with your takes on the world of sports. And until next time, peace out.